short recording just to show you how to set up your Adobe Creative Cloud blog. So really important, you go onto Google first and you type in Adobe Creative Cloud Express like I have here. Really important you use the Express. This is the free version. You do not need to pay at all for Creative Cloud. This used to be called Adobe Spark. It's now called Creative Cloud Express. It does exactly the same thing. The reason we're using this is that whilst government have invested a lot of money into Adobe, this is gonna give you some really good digital experience using a platform that schools are already using. Okay, so you come down, I come down, there's so many different Adobe options. I go to Login Adobe Creative Cloud. When you press this, I'm already logged in on my computer, so you'll have a different view to this. It'll ask you, log in with Gmail, log in with AOL, log in with Facebook. I would use your student account, so your ST number. So just log in with your um, student account, and then you can go from there. You'll be taken to this page. This is the Adobe suite of apps. There's loads of different things. Lightroom is really good. For all you Instagram lovers, it can turn a really shabby looking picture into a really good one. It adds in different lights, filters, those sort of things. If you get more followers, you definitely owe me half. Any of you become influencers, there's Adobe Acrobat, there's Adobe Express, you can see there. So you're gonna click on Adobe Express once you've logged in. You'll know you've logged in because your details will be at the top. So there's mine, Sir Jick, Sir Duke of Young, don't ask, okay. So this is Adobe Express. So this is Adobe Expressive Cloud. It's really good. It's similar to Canva, if any of you have used Canva. It's an editing suite. So there's all these different things that you can do. So you can do your Instagram stories, Instagram posts. I use this a lot on Twitter. I use it a lot on Instagram. It can make a normal looking picture look really good. You can make posters. So as a teacher, I was constantly using this used to be called Adobe Spark, so I was using this to make posters. Really good for logos. Again, this is really good for um, table groups. You've gone to logos, flyers, collages, book covers, all these different things, and children absolutely love this. So again, it's free. You could set them up yourself while you're on placement. All right, have a play around with this. I, like I said, I've used this a lot outside of work as well as inside of work as a teacher. What you're going to need to do to set up your blog, you go onto this plus button here. So the plus button, you've got all these different things. So you can create GIFs, you can resize images, you can edit images, you can move background, just really clever. But we're looking to do, you've got all these, this is the web page. So your blog is called the web page. So you're going to click on web page, it'll take you through. This will create a web presence, which is here. So this is your blog. So really, really simple. You're gonna start with my AOLA blog. You're gonna put your name. Don't put my name, put your name. Okay, and you can see you can add in photos. You can add in covers, split layouts. I'll show you those in a second. What's brilliant with the photos, you're gonna add your own pictures. So if you've got any pictures from classrooms, any experience that you've had, you can upload them yourself. You can also search the Adobe stock. So for example, education. Say you're talking about, I don't know, children in class. Well, then it brings it through and looks really good. Okay, so you're gonna scroll down. When you scroll down on this plus button, you can add photos, you can add text, you can add buttons, they're links. You can add in videos directly from YouTube and Vimeo. There's a photo grid, so if you've got lots of different photos, then it's got a bit of a slideshow. Same as a glide show. And split layout is you've got some text. So you could say about, I don't know, say you're talking about digital competence. And then you've got an image of a child in a computer. And obviously, you get marks for including relevant images, multimedia. That's the whole point of this blog, is that yes, you have the academic side in that you've got work that's supported by academic literature, but we also want to see relevant multimedia, which includes images, which includes sound files, which includes videos, which includes things that you've made, apps that you've made, within the university sessions. Okay, so you can see here buttons is another 
example. So you might have found a really good website. You could type in, um, I don't know, say so this is a digital competence. It's spelt really wrongly, link, and then you would drop the link in there and then it can appear in the middle. Again, what we want to see is not just random pictures or random links. It's really important that within your blog, you are using the multimedia to support what you're saying. As you would with an academic source, you're also using multimedia. So you could be talking about, um, as seen or demonstrated in this YouTube clip, in minute 14 and 22 seconds, the main person is talking about blah, 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 blah. So it's not just a video that sits on its own. Okay, I'll let you have a bit of a play around with this. Um, so you've got all these different things. As we've mentioned, you do need to save all this on to a Word document, and then you will transfer it across. I know that's going to be a lengthy process, but this is a free web browser. It hasn't happened to any of my classes or any of my pupils. I do know some schools that have lost all of their children's work. This is free. So you're not paying for it. So usually the response from Adobe is that they'll do everything they can to retrieve it, but you can't rely on it. So you have to write everything down on Word. You'll submit that as well. Really, really, really important that you have that backup and then you'll transfer them across. There's probably going to be a lot of copying and pasting. I appreciate that's really annoying for you, but there'll be nothing worse than you come to submit on the day and Adobe has lost all of your work because their site has crashed. So please make sure, so university policy, we cannot accept from anyone, if Adobe loses your work, you should have a backup. That is really, really important. Okay, looking at the top here, there's settings. You don't need to worry too much about Google Analytics. I doubt these are going to go too viral. You can preview to see what your site looks like. As you can see here, we haven't done much on it yet and we can come up there really really important is this does not go live until you press share so i'm not going to press this yet you go to publish and share link so you'll put your title you can pick a category as education it doesn't really matter you've got the author don't worry too much about photo credits and then it'll go to create link when you create the link which takes a bit of a time to go through that's what you're going to copy and paste and that's what you're going to drop into your pro forma document. Really, really important you publish this. If you don't do this pr process of publishing and sharing the link, we don't have access, we cannot mark your work, and you will potentially fail the module. We don't want that to happen. So just make sure you've checked the link works. Some people last year didn't check and the link didn't work for us. We don't want to be spending our time chasing you. Really, really important, just check the link works and you've copied the link correctly within the pro forma document. I just wanna go back to, this is Adobe Express. What some students did, which was brilliant last year, so they've got their blog up and running and for each of the blog titles, they use the template. So for example, they use, I don't know, let's just say for this one, they use templates and they change the letter in. And they can add in text. So just as an example, let's just add in text here. Choose any of these. Okay, and we can change that to blog one and then you can put your title which say it's digital competence i'm sure this is some brushing but you know what i mean here so you can actually and you'll get marks for this so you're actually using a digital app to actually enhance your blog and then once you're happy with this i haven't been able to put the because I'm rushing here. I'm able to put the full title in, but you can change all of this. If you're not happy with this to template, you could use something else. You go to download, you download it, it would save as an image, and then you save it to your downloads, and then you could upload this 
to your blog. So what looked really, really good is that you had your, let's go back here, you had your blog, and then from your blog, you'd have blog title one, and then you'd have your first blog, your digital competence, then you'd have blog title two, and you're talking about digital numeracy, or numeracy, and then in the third one, you'd be talking about literacy, and again, you're using these titles, just again, a simple way of using multimedia to create your blogs. We're gonna be showing you loads of different apps, loads of different editing software. Again, those that got really good marks last year actually use the apps and the videos to create. So one of the students last year, uh, they used an animation app to animate themselves to say, welcome to my blog. This is my first blog. The first blog title I'll be tackling is about digital competence. So they had a video as a title, which again, it's a really good use. We want to see these innovative and creative ways of you incorporating multimedia into your blogs. If you've just got text, you're going to miss out on loads of opportunities to earn marks. So just make sure you're thinking about different ways of engaging and bringing in different multimedia. Okay, that is Adobe Express. Adobe Creative Cloud Express to be in its fullest form. If you have any problems, troubles, issues, see me at the end of lectures or in seminars. Good luck.